The movie opens in the Mexican desert, where a scavenger accidentally comes across a hidden hole. Inside, he finds an ancient-looking spear wrapped in a Nazi flag. As soon as he unwraps the flag, he's possessed by an unknown force. Following this, he starts walking towards the road, where he's suddenly hit by a car. In a shocking turn, the car crumbles, but the man gets up and continues walking. The scene then cuts to Los Angeles, where a mother prepares breakfast for her sick daughter. But as she takes the food to her daughter's room, she sees her snarling on the ceiling. No, too much sugar again. The family immediately calls Father Hennessy one of the best in the biz, but even he doesn't have the courage to deal with this devilry. Hence, he summons a cynical occult expert, John Constantine, and his apprentice, Louis Stevens, aka Chaz. John arrives at the scene to find the sick daughter tied up to her bed. He opens a window and lets the sunlight in, but the girl seems to resist it. He then presses an amulet on the girl's forehead, which burns her skin. She begins convulsing and screaming as John mutters an incantation. Soon after, the girl stops shaking, but a silhouette pops out from her neck, appearing as if it's ready to tear out of her body. Sensing the urgency of the situation, John asks the family for a mirror, which he positions right above the girl. Following this, he instructs everyone to shut their eyes while he conducts the exorcism. Despite his warning, one of the men takes a peek, and as a consequence, he starts screaming as his hair turns gray. John then forces the hidden demon to look up in the mirror, look at your stupid face, and traps it inside. He then throws it out of the window, causing it to fall onto Chaz's car and smash to pieces. Before departing from the scene, John notices a sketch of the legendary Spear of Destiny, the same one from the opening scene, and steals it. As he walks out, he tells Hennessy that the exorcism wasn't standard. John also vaguely predicts something big is going to happen. In the next scene, we see a detective named Angela confessing to a priest, saying that she killed another criminal. She wonders how she always knows where these bad men are and the exact moment when she should pull the trigger. In response, the priest tells her that God has something planned for her. Later at home, she has a dream of waking up from a hospital bed. She repeatedly hears the name Isabel, so she gets up to follow it to the hospital roof. Angela then removes her medical tag and jumps through the glass roof, landing in the hospital's pool. She floats momentarily before waking up back in her bed breathing heavily. The next morning, John undergoes a lung x-ray and a doctor reveals that he has terminal lung cancer due to years of chain smoking. This means that he only has a short time left to live. Meanwhile, Angela arrives in the same hospital to inspect a self-kill case. She examines the dead body and is devastated to learn that it's her twin sister, Isabel, who has been admitted to the hospital as a mental patient. Her colleague claims that Isabel jumped from the roof, but Angela refuses to believe that her sister, a devout Catholic, would commit the unthinkable and condemn herself to hell. Later at home, John is visited by his friend Beeman, who brings a bunch of supernatural items for him to use in his missions. John tells him about the demon that tried to escape into the human realm earlier. Beeman responds that it isn't supposed to happen and promises to research the matter. The same evening, John goes to a church and coincidentally, Angela also arrives there at the same time. She speaks with a priest, expressing her desire to give Isabel a Catholic funeral. However, he refuses because Isabel committed the unthinkable, and that's a mortal sin. Simultaneously, John meets a half-breed angel, Gabriel, and starts talking to her. He asks if she can extend his life, but she simply laughs at him. John points out that he's banished lots of demons back into hell, and that service should make up for his sin. However, she asserts that it's just not enough. Elsewhere, Hennessy runs his hands through several newspapers and hears the news articles in his head. Cool trick. Eventually, Eventually, he stops at the article of Isabel's death, sensing something amiss. That night, Angela reviews footage of her sister's death and hears her mutter John's name. She then searches for his details, intending to pay him a visit. In the meantime, John is casually smoking on the streets when he's attacked by a demon covered in insects. This ensues a physical brawl between the two. They go back and forth for a while, and in the end, the demon suddenly gets hit by an oncoming van, killing all the insects. All of them? In the aftermath, John goes to Midnight's Nightclub, a place where the half-breeds hang out. It's not nice to call them that. He walks straight to a room to meet the club owner, Papa Midnight. He's a powerful occultist who, unlike John, has decided to stay neutral in the fight of heaven versus hell. John tells him about the demon that attacked him, but Midnight doesn't believe him because according to the rules, the pure demons can't cross over to the human realm. Their conversation is abruptly interrupted by a half-breed demon, Balthazar, who keeps playing with a coin while teasing John. When John 
Han threatens him back. Midnight cuts in and reminds them that his club doesn't accept hostility. Upon returning back home, John is visited by Angela, who seeks his help as she believes that Isabel has been brainwashed into committing the unthinkable. However, John thinks she's just desperate for her sister to get to heaven, so he turns her down. As she leaves, he witnesses some shadowy demons pursuing her. Believing that her case might be related to the recent demonic incidents, John goes after her. He tells her about the demons, but she obviously scoffs at the thought as she doesn't believe in their existence. Just heaven and hell, you know. Suddenly, the lights around them turn off, and the duo are stuck in darkness. They also hear some weird, windy noises, as if something is flying above them. Sensing the evil presence, John quickly lights a cloth, exposing the demons surrounding them. The fire blaze instantly burns them down to ashes. John then theorizes that the demons were after her, not him. After this, he agrees to take Angela's case. To delve deeper into the matter, he decides to journey into hell to see if Isabel is there. This would also prove that she really committed the unthinkable. In Angela's apartment, John puts his feet into a basin of water and takes her cat. He stares into its eyes to establish a connection with the supernatural. That seals it. All cats are from hell. Moments later, time stops around him and he suddenly arrives in hell. Once there, he takes out Beeman's holy water for protection and makes his way through the hellish landscape, ignoring all the demons around. He soon notices Isabel at the edge of a cliff. He tries calling her, but she hurls her medical tag and suddenly jumps off. John chases the tag, while the other demons begin pursuing him. Just before they can get to him, he grabs the tag and smashes the holy water on his chest, traveling back to Isabel's apartment. Following this, he hands over the medical tag to Angela, confirming that her sister did commit the unthinkable. Meanwhile, Hennessy sneaks into the morgue to inspect Isabel's corpse. As he grabs her arms to read her memories, he notices a strange mark on her wrist. Terrified, he tries to drink from his liquor flask, but not a single drop falls from it. Hennessy then runs to a nearby liquor store and desperately tries to drink from different wine bottles, but to no avail, he eventually collapses to the floor and begins to choke. In his last breath, he grabs a bottle opener and tries stabbing his palm. At the same time, Balthazar shows up and enjoys watching Hennessy die. Here, it's revealed that Balthazar created an illusion to make the priest think that there was no liquid. But he's actually choking on tons of it, just like what happens to your liver when you do shots. Back to John, he explains to Angela that he was able to see all kinds of supernatural entities since his childhood. Not knowing what to do, his parents sent him to a mental institution to be treated, but it only made it worse. Feeling scared and alone, the young John attempted the unthinkable. According to him, he was officially dead for two minutes. However, in hell, time moved more slowly, so he felt like he was down there for a lifetime. The paramedics brought him back, and John finally accepted that everything he could see was real. Because of this terrible sin, his soul will now go to hell as soon as he dies. As a result, he has been exercising demons, hoping that it'll earn him salvation. Their conversation is suddenly interrupted when Angela receives a call, informing her of Hennessy's death. As the duo arrives at the scene, John notices a bloody mark, the same one on Isabel's wrist. He duplicates the symbol and sends it to Beeman for research. After this, John and Angela go to Isabel's hospital room to find some clues. John believes that the connection between twins is strong, so he forces Angela to try and remember anything that can help with the case. Where did you last see her? Was she single? I mean, are you single? I mean, oh man. Eventually, she remembers that as kids, they had a secret way to communicate with each other by fogging on the window. She then breathes on the nearby window, which reveals the message, Corinthians 17. Later, as they drive away, they talk to Beeman on the phone. He explains that Corinthians 17 talks about the prophecy of Memon, the devil's son who will bring everlasting darkness upon humanity when unleashed. The Bible says that Memon wants to forge his kingdom of hell, surpassing even Satan's. For this to happen, Memon needs to possess a powerful psychic plus a divine being. As Beeman continues explaining his theory, he notices something amiss and hangs up. Suddenly, a large amount of insects start coming out of his eyes. John and Angela rush to him, but it's too late as he's already dead. Elsewhere, the Mexican man carrying the Spear of Destiny makes it to the highway. He approaches a car, kills its driver, and steals it before driving towards Los Angeles. Back at Beeman's place, Angela admits that she used to see things when she was young. However, she repressed them to avoid being deemed insane like her sister. As she got older, her visions slowly disappeared. Now that she feels guilty for her actions, she asks John to help her reconnect with the spirit realm. John warns that there's no turning back after that, but she remains resolute. He then fills a bathtub with water and makes 
lets her lie in it. He holds her down even if she starts running out of breath. When Angela finally drowns, time slows down for her. In just a matter of seconds, she experiences a harrowing journey to hell and gets her power back. Once she snaps back to life, she senses something and rushes to Beeman's office, where she finds Balthazar's coin. Upon realizing that Balthazar is involved in all of this, John confronts him, demanding answers. After a brief scuffle, the latter reveals that the divine key to Memon's arrival on the human realm is the Spear of Destiny. Moreover, he discloses that Angela has been chosen as Memon's new host. Enraged by this revelation, John shoots him and leaves with Angela. Moments later, a mysterious figure appears over Balthazar and destroys him. This unseen entity then pulls Angela away through several concrete walls, leaving John helpless. A desperate John then rushes to Midnight and demands to use the chair. In response, Midnight pins him against the wall, accusing him of intending to thwart the balance between heaven and hell. But when John explains the ongoing predicament, Midnight finally agrees to help. Following this, they begin the procedure. John sits on the chair, and Midnight electrocutes him with a bulb. This triggers a vision, and John sees the Mexican man heading to the hospital, where tons of half-breed demons are seen awaiting Maman's arrival. Armed with this information, John and Chaz devise a plan to rescue Angela. Meanwhile, Angela is dropped at the hospital pool, where she encounters the Mexican man. She tries to shoot him, but the bullets have no effect on him. A short while later, John and Chaz arrive at the hospital. Chaz immediately goes to the water tank to bless it with a holy cross, while John confronts the demons. Once Chaz is done, John activates the sprinklers and spreads the holy water, making them all weak. After this, he guns them down, one after another. What do we do once they're weak? Yeah, we shoot them. John and Chaz then enter the pool room, only to find the dead body of the Mexican man. Just then, the water starts boiling and a possessed Angela emerges. A fierce fight ensues between her and John, but the latter somehow manages to gain the upper hand. With the help of Chaz, they pin her to the floor and begin chanting the incantation. It seemingly works as Angela snaps back to normal. The two friends then continue to chant until the demon finally disappears. Unfortunately, a few moments later, Chaz is suddenly hurled several times against the ceiling and floor, resulting in his immediate demise. This devastates John, as he had incorrectly assumed the danger was already over. Determined to avenge his friend, he combines his arm tattoos and invokes an incantation to unveil a hidden entity. Soon after, Gabriel descends upon him, revealing that she's the divine touch that's helping Maman. Gabriel appears to be resentful at God's favoritism for humanity and forgiveness for even the most wicked. Thus, she intends to unleash hell on earth, so that those who rise above would be truly worthy of heaven. She then tosses John away and prepares to pierce Angela with a spearhead to unleash Maman. In a desperate attempt to stop her, John prays to God and uses a glass shard to end his life. As he starts bleeding, time stops, freezing Gabriel as well. Then, the devil Lucifer himself appears to escort John to hell. Our hero uses this opportunity to inform him that Maman is about to come to Earth. Despite being skeptical, Lucifer goes to the other room to check, only to discover Gabriel on the verge of stabbing Angela to release Maman. As a result, he takes Angela away right before time unfreezes. He then attacks Gabriel and effortlessly burns her wings before banishing Maman back to hell. Now that it's all over, Lucifer asks if John wants a life extension as a reward for warning him about Maman. However, John answers in the negative and asks him to send Isabel's soul to heaven instead. Lucifer instantly agrees and releases her, but to his shock, John also begins ascending to heaven for his selfless sacrifice. Infuriated by the betrayal, the devil digs into John's lungs and removes his cancer, extending his life in hopes that he'll sin again. In the aftermath of this event, John wakes up with all of his wounds healed. He retrieves the spearhead and prepares to leave with Angela. Right then, they're stopped by Gabriel, who has now turned into a human. She hands him a gun and urges him to shoot her in an attempt to make him commit a sin. However, John simply delivers a punch before departing. In the final scene, John hands Angela the Spear of Destiny for her safety, and the two bid farewell, promising to meet each other again. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.